I am Dr. Azad Mohammed out of the University of the West Indies Department of Life Sciences. Uh, our major objectives at the university is to impart knowledge and conduct research on environment, important environmental issues. We have, a strong, we have a strong environmental degree program and we do have a very active environmental research group in the organization at, U, at the UWI. Uh, we do a lot of work on different types of contaminants, including things like pesticides, heavy metals, and more recently, one specific one metal of concern, which is mercury. So we've been doing some um, applied research, really, on the distribution and uh, levels of mercury in environmental settings. Um, which are of interest to public health and human well-being. Not just in background levels and things like soils, but also in things that you consume. Example, food that you eat, um, fisheries, um, imported products. With regards to mercury, our major concern is the amount of it that's coming into the country. Um, not just as elemental mercury, but in forms that people are not particularly aware of. Things like cosmetics, things like a dental amalgam, things like um, light bulbs, fluorescent lights, LED, LCD displays and computers, all contain some level of mercury in it. When these products are used, and when they have reached their end of life, then they're simply disposed of most of the times in a non-environmentally friendly manner. They are discarded into landfills or in the backyards of people or people's homes. Or if you drive down the road, you see piles of it sitting on the side of the road. Especially in our present era, our present day um, society, where electronics are a major part of our everyday lives, there is an increasing um, pressure for disposal of electronic waste especially things like old televisions, computer monitors, printers in some cases also, um, photocopying machines, cell phones. Uh, anything that has a cold vapor light in it will eventually inevitably have some sort of mercury in them. So our primary concern is where is this thing ending up? Not only in the environment but also in our food chain. Tell people that it's in the environment, they're not concerned if it's in the soil, if it's in their water supply, they may have concerns. But when people now begin to realize that it's present in their food supply and can have potential impacts on their very health or well being, then people start raising um, alarms. Then they start getting concerned is it safe to eat this product? Uh, presently, we have ongoing research in um, heavy metals in general. We've done some work in the past on heavy metals and um, oil products, but we've been looking at things like oysters and fish that people actually consume. So presently we have two ongoing research projects, one on the distribution and the types of material, types of fish species that people are consuming, and then another one on the amount of mercury and other heavy metals in particular things like lead, um, arsenic, chromium, uh, mercury in particular in most of these consumable products. Things like uh, curry for example, kingfish, um, shark, your top predators that you find in the oceans. The ones that people like to enjoy eating a lot. So we want to figure out what it is that people are likely at risk of um, accumulating once they're um, consuming these products. Not only the things that we, caught, we catch locally, but also what is coming in from um, foreign sources, the things that we are importing. What levels of contaminants are likely to be in there and is it at a um, uh, level that will likely cause some sort of adverse human health effect eventually. Because most of these metals are bioaccumulative, meaning that when you take them in, they stay in your system. The more of the material that you eat, the more of the products that you eat, the more materials that you accumulate in your system. There are no mechanisms for um, elimination of these heavy metals from your system. They're either locked away, sequestered somewhere, or 
they start attacking or having reactions with specific sites in your body. Some of these heavy metals like mercury and lead are what we call um, potent neurotoxins, meaning that they can affect your nervous system. But of course, there are threshold limits or um, permissible limits in the environment and in your food source. So once they begin to cross those threshold limits, then you can have adverse effects likely happening. One of the things that we have to be aware of is our consciousness. What are we buying that contains these products and is there anything that we can substitute about it for them? Um, our choices, what do we purchase? Do we use fluorescent lamps or can we use an alternative? On the market now, there are LED lamps which are less harmful, uh, utilize a lot less energy and the end products are usually a lot safer for the environment. They're not a um, significant amount of mercury entering once they're disposed of. Um, recycling materials, for example. Being aware that you, are, you have a choice in what you purchase. Um, being aware that you can decide on what items you utilize for yourselves. For example, people who use um, facial products, skin bleaching creams, for example, a lot of those do contain mercury compounds in them. So it is your choice to decide which is it that you would like to choose, one that contains mercury or one that doesn't. Uh, a similar thing happened with things like microplastics in recent years. Um, a company such as Johnson & Johnson, for example, because of public pressures, because of the information that's available with the re, um, impact, um, regarding the impacts of things like microplastics in the environment, now that the population has been educated about it, they had to change a lot of their products and remove the microplastics from it to ensure that they can capture and keep their markets that they have. Right? It was a corporate decision, but one that they made uh, willingly. So people making Right, asking the right questions, people lobbying for the right for changes to happen, it's sufficient to cause um, or bring about the change that they want to see. Same thing with mercury. We don't need to have fluorescent lights. Yes, it's very um, energy efficient, so they say, and it's cheaper, so they say. But we can decide that the um, cost environmentally because of them is too much and we will not be using it. A simple fluorescent lamp, depending on the size of it, may contain anywhere between 8 to 40 milligrams of mercury in it. So our choices, that's what we need to do and educate ourselves about the impacts of it and how it can move in the environment. It's not only because it's produced in Trinidad or it's used in Trinidad, it's not going to stay here. Because it's used in North America or South America, it's not going to stay there. Most of the con these contaminants um, move across boundaries. They, know, they don't respect boundaries. They don't respect international boundaries. They move um, from one point to the next easily and quite frequently. We don't often know it, but they do. Right? So being able to educate yourself about the impacts of these heavy metals or this mercury, for example, and finding out where are the potential sources can help you decide on what it is that you would like to get done or what changes you would like to see brought about because of it. If it is that we lobby for um, less use of these uh, fluorescent bulbs and switch to something else, then it starts with public pressure. We decide that we don't want to do it anymore. Right? If it is that you would like to have advisory reports on the food products that you're importing or the food that you're eating, then you can ask the relevant authorities to be able to provide advisories on it, to do the relevant testing, to make sure that you're not consuming products that, have, that can be potentially harmful to yourself or to anyone else. Because the last thing people like to do is to ingest or intake um, materials that can cause them harm. And the only way they can do, um, prevent that from happening is if they know. And 90% of the time, there is nothing on any labels that says, free of these contents. You see it in things like baby bottles and stuff, BPA free. But there are no consumer products that says this does not contain mercury, lead or something else or any other chemicals or additives. You see it sometimes in um, organic products, no 
organic, no pesticides, no additives. Why can't it be done for other products also? Mercury-free, lead-free. So as a toxicologist and someone who likes to eat a lot, you should go wild for making wise choices and knowing what you consume so that you can protect yourself from the potential impacts of any sort of heavy metals that may be in your food at concentrations that will cause you harm or can't cause you harm.